Jesus. Amen. 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 All right. Is that everything? All right. Look at somebody say grievous wolves. Bible said grievous. I say grievous. Grievous. Grievous wolves. As the Bible says. The Bible teaches us about the last days. And today I'm going to show you some stuff that's going on. And I just have to make it clear for, for the saints. Amen. 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 Just make it clear. That's my job. It ain't to just try to out nobody or nothing. I'm just taking what they said. That's right. And I'm going to show you what the Bible says. Amen. 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 Because a wolf is going to lie and try like this one and try to look like a sheep. That's what he's trying to look like. But a wolf is not a sheep. Amen. And the Bible says in the last days, this would become common yeah. and it will become common in two places. It says some would enter in and do it like some of the undercover bootleg Hebrews that enter in here and try to make you leave. But then the worst part, it also said those that are among you, some of their hearts will change and they'll begin to befriend people just to take them out. That's all scripture. Amen. AdamandBeliever.com forward slash GrievousWolves.pdf These are the three we're going to be talking about today. This is Jamal Bryant, Kanye Yee, and Howard John Wesley. Acts 20 and 29 says, For I know this, that after my departing, Paul is saying, for I know this, that after my departing shall grievous wolves enter in among you. So they're going to come in among you, not sparing, meaning they are coming in killing. If you're not sparing, you, when you spare, you let someone go. But they're going to come in not letting go of anyone. They're going to enter in among you, not sparing the flock. Also of your own selves shall men do what? People you know that was with you and you thought they were good. The Bible said they're going to arise among you and all of a sudden have a problem and then convince you that the problem is great enough for you to follow them. It says also of your own self shall men arise speaking what? Perverse things. To draw away disciples after them. No man is validated unless he has someone to validate him. Someone has to follow him for him to feel validated. So they're going to come in. This is every church across the globe in this last day. Grievous wolves with doctrine that is not biblical and is not truth. They're going to come and deceive. Amen. And make disciples after themselves. Jamal Bryant. Y'all know he just went viral. If you didn't know. For being a drug dealer. For Christ. He says he's going to grow weed. And sell it. And teach young men that smoke it how to grow it and they're going to use the land that their church owns to farm weed watch I'm looking for people that smell like weeds <laughs> no 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 really it is <laughs> New Birth is the largest land owning black church in America wow. and so my position to my deacons is why aren't we not raising cannabis? I'll be able to bring in black males. They're able to do it legally. Mm. I'm teaching them farming. Oh my God. I'm helping them to enhance the ecosystem. Uh, th th this is the kind of conversation. So if the guy, black boy in Bankhead said, they were on weed at the church. The smoke helped the ecosystem. Smoke. He's 100% serious.
Look at somebody and say, grievous. grievous. Marijuana is a hallucinogen. Period. Just because it's been legalized does not mean it's safe, good for you, or something a Christian should embrace. Just because it's legalized. Hard liquor is legal. But it's not safe, good for you, or something a Christian should embrace. Cigarettes are legal. Right? Porn is legal. Is it safe? Is it good for you? Or is it something that a Christian should embrace? So everything that is legalized. Mm. First Peter 5 and 8. <laughs> I just got to read the first two words. First two words says, be sober. The opposite of sober is high. Is high. Is high the opposite of sober? If you high, are you sober? No. Don't they have a test they can give you? <laughs> if you drunk, you not sober. You eat too much cheesecake. <laughs> uh oh, see, they don't want to go that. You can eat enough sugar to where you ain't sober, and you start making stupid decisions. You got a divorce because you ate too much cake. <laughs> it's one candy apple too many. Yeah, you got to be sober. That's why you got to watch what you put in your body. Amen. Amen. Even prescription drugs and stuff that's legal can mess with your sobriety. So Peter says, be sober and be vigilant. Why did he say be sober? Because when you're not sober, you can't see the devil. He said, be sober because. Be sober. Look at somebody say, be sober because. Be sober because. Because this is why you be sober. Because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking who is not sober. Sober. He, who he may devour. You can't stop him if you're not sober. <laughs> Gotta get scientific with some folks. Because you know, the devil wants people to smoke weed. That's why it's legalized. Now, he wants people to smoke weed. So it will disconnect their frontal lobe, which is their guardian. This is, that's your guardian. That's where your body houses all of your rules that were given to you during your development. So when mama popped your hand because you grabbed at something you shouldn't have, your frontal lobe recorded that. So the next time you do it, your frontal lobe gets in the way and says, remember, this is where we store our morality. This is why it's important to read the word. The Bible said, desire the sincere milk of the word that you may grow thereby. Grow how? By nourishing your frontal lobe and teaching it God's rules. So that when you're getting ready to do something against God, your frontal lobe will block you and speak truth to you in that moment so you don't do it. Now, this is why we whoop our kids. We whoop and we punish them. We teaching them different things. Yeah, we teach them respect. Yes, sir. And it'll remind them of that respect. So when they get stopped by the cops, cop ain't a, is not their father. But their frontal lobe will register at that moment and say, he's an authority. Yeah. Call him sir. Yes, sir. Call her ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Where did that come from? You didn't just make that up. That came from your upbringing and what is stored in your guardian to protect you. So the devil knew this all along. Back 
back in 2000, back in 1998, I preached and told everyone in my video that weed was a hallucinogen and it would disconnect your frontal lobe from your psyche. In other words, it will allow entrance or ownership of another entity. It's, it's disconnecting you from what you know as God. Amen. That was back when folks wasn't smoking it like this. They used to sneak and smoke it. Man, it's legal. Why is it legal? Because the devil wants people to smoke weed. So it will disconnect their frontal lobe, their guardian, where morality rests to govern a person with whatever rules they have placed there. This is where the Holy Spirit operates in the life of a believer to guide them to truth. He said he would bring back remembrance of things to lead and guide you. But if you inhibit, you just got one brain. God is using your brain. If he don't use your brain, there's no communication. I'll see. You can keep trying to fill them in your toenail if you want to but God is using your brain because that's where your sense is and so this is where the Holy Spirit is in the life of a believer this is where he guides them and he places his rules and regulations there so they can guide you then he can bring it back to remembrance because it's recorded there if it's not recorded there Jay ain't nothing to bring back When this region of your brain is inhibited by a hallucinogen, the person's desires change and they no longer desire to obey or be governed by their moral regulations. In other words, it's easier to disobey God if you smoke weed. You essentially disconnect yourself from the Holy Spirit and open yourself up to other governing spirits and entities. Whenever you're high, it's spiritual. <laughs> Whenever you're high, it's spiritual because the roaring lion is walking about looking for folks that are high. Because it's easier. You know, we live in a time, you know, back when I was growing up, you know, you... You want to date a girl, you want to talk to a girl, you have to talk to her father first. You got to go talk to him, see if he likes you, see if he likes you for her, right? But when a, the strong man is not there, the Bible says, how can you spoil a man's goods unless you first bind the strong man? And if you bind him, then his goods are in jeopardy. And so now brothers just holler at girls at random. They don't have to respect the authority anymore because in most cases, the strong man is bound. He's not there. So they're not afraid to just approach. Right? Well, I'm telling you that story, which was a good one. <laughs> Using that analogy to show you how the devil feels when your guardian is inhibited. Certain things he can't do to you when you're in your right mind. He's not coming around when you prayed up. He's not coming around when you done fasted. When you've given time to him and read his word and you loaded with scripture, he ain't gonna mess with you. But as soon as you get high, here comes the roaring lion. You're unprotected. You're disconnected from what protects you from him. I'm preaching in here. Folk don't wanna hear the weed message. Amen. And your lips. It's going to be a metamorphosis that you can't reverse. You essentially disconnect yourself from the Holy Spirit and open yourself up to other governing spirits and entities. The Bible calls them what? Seducing spirits. 1 Corinthians 6 and 12. All things are lawful unto me, but all things are, yeah. are not expedient. Yeah. It's lawful, it's legal, but it's not good, it's not smart. It's going to work against me. It's counterproductive. Then he says, all things are lawful, but 
I will not what? Be brought under. You're not smoking weed without being brought under the power of it. That's what high is. Being high means you're under another power. Can I just use the scriptures? Amen. I preach this thing. I've been preaching it for years. And besides him being in his fraternity with his frat brothers, which we know that's antichrist, because you didn't pledge to false gods and dance to demons with your cane. Greek gods that Paul called devils. So you already use your body and your members to worship false gods. So you already in trouble, no matter what's in that sack. You in trouble. (laughs) Jamal knows this, but for the sake of money and fame, he will become a pastor of weed smokers. You think that's not the reason? He is also a liar. Let me tell you why he lied. Because he is not using the land he owns for the betterment of people to teach them agriculture and land development. You're not doing that by growing weed. He's a liar. They could benefit more by teaching them to farm foods and build properties on the land. Wouldn't that make more sense? This is a contrived attempt to make Christianity look impotent in the eyes of the younger generation. That's all it is. And he's being used. Jamal Bryan is a part of the apostate movement that is here to discredit the gospel and make people second guess its validity. He has already become an advocate of murdering the unborn and now he supports weed smoking. He is an advocate of antichrist policies being used by the elite to make black people support and embrace the destruction of their own communities. Amen. What a shame. Titus 111, whose mouths must be stopped, who subvert whole houses, teaching things they ought not. For what? It's always about the money. Amen. You know, hold up. the imagery here, do you see it? You can see what they're doing just by looking at this frozen picture, this freeze frame. Look at it. Only executioners cover their whole face in black. So he's an executioner with a holy Bible in front of him while he's talking. Yeah, this is all on purpose. He is the propaganda puppet. Yeah, he's been used for one reason, and that's to make us all look crazy. Anybody that names the name of Jesus make us look crazy. Mm Mm-hmm. That's right. You're not Hitler. You're not a Nazi. You don't deserve to be called that and demonized. Well, I I see I I see good things about Hitler. Also, the Jew. I love everyone. I'm done with the classifications. Every human being has something of value that they brought to the table, especially Hitler. He's controlled opposition. They're using him to make him look like he's outing the Illuminati when he's really with them. Yeah, he's really with them. He's working for them. Yeah. Huh. Hitler? I mean, <laughs> how you reach and get Hitler? Like the worst man that's ever lived next to Satan. And you're going to exonerate him? And say there's good things about it, especially him. <laughs> While a Bible sits in front of you, that makes Christianity look evil. Man, I tried to warn. 
Here's his song, S, hot S. Spelled it last week, but I ain't gonna spell it again. We dropped the letter out of it, so. Cardi B, Lil Durk, and Kanye. I think I got all the cussing out. If I didn't, forgive me. Lil Durk, his lyric. This is Kanye's on this. I got plenty cars, I hit plenty stars, which means he had sex with them. And I didn't blank. I said it plenty times, I pay for bodies. I ain't pay for none. You think I'm finna leave my B for you? I thought you couldn't say that. You can say it as long as it's in the song. Oh, okay. She F Future 2? I know that Vaughn hit her. She, who is this? She put up on my block. <laughs> and some fly shoes, them Jimmy Choo's. Yee, this is his lyrics. Guess who top? Let's see how he worships God in his Christian lyrics. Guess who's topping now? Uh, God got me now. Guess who at Balenciaga? Guess who's shopping now? Well, you ain't at Balenciaga. They can't stop me now. I've been popping out. Cardi, where your sister at? I need Henny now. So now he wants his sister, her sister, Hennessy. Why you name that girl Hennessy? I flew, I flew in and out 150,000, just throwing money around. Now even when they shout, they got to shout me out. So go ahead, not even close. All of y'all is number two. Did that sound anything Christian? Or can it be Christian in a song called Hot S? And what about this video? Why is he always walking on water? Talk about it. He's always walking on water. Think that's a coincidence? And then he's on an idol of Cardi. Performing. That's who's speaking for the Christians. That's our representative to the hip-hop generation. Man, I warned you. I sure did. Did I warn you? I sure did. Kanye is being used by the elite to take credibility away from Christians and those with conservative viewpoints. He's taking credibility away from conservatives. Have you noticed how they've demonized conservatives? Black folks hate conservatives because all they had to do was say Trump was a racist. Black folks done with conservatives now. They hate them. They hate Greg Abbott Pastors. And I said, brother, do you know that Abbott was the only thing standing in the way of your church staying open? They were closing all the churches. And Abbott said, you will not close the church under my administration. That's how we were able to keep going. And you hate him? Yeah, well, he liked Trump. That's all, that's all they had to do? That's all they had to do. That's all they had to do to make black folks hate conservatism and become liberal. You know what, liberal? Uh -oh. well, anyway, I ain't finna preach a political message. But what? Yeah. So they got the black folks hating it. Now they gotta get this guy to make him make conservatism look crazy and link it to Hitler. Trump wasn't bad enough. Now conservatives are linked to Hitler. You don't see what they're doing? Yeah. The LGBT, the abortionist, same-sex marriage and all of them, all of that. The folks that want to legalize drugs, the folks that want to legalize pedophilia. They can't do it under conservatism. So they need conservatism to go away or for people to throw it away if we can make it look bad. So now they done linked Hitler with Christianity and the Bible. Because when he was talking, the Bible was in front of him. You don't see what this is? They have used him to lure young people away from the church and into his God-forsaken movement. Why couldn't preachers that are Holy Ghost filled see what he was up to? How do you let your kids go to that? 
Some of them took their kids. You don't have no Holy Ghost if you took your children to see Kanye West. None. Give your license back to the cereal box. You're not qualified. You couldn't see this coming? They have used him to lure young people away from the church. Now, they can sing sinful, secularized songs with Christ's name, use foul language, and show graphic sex images in their videos all under the guise of Christianity. Because he, he holds the top billboard spots for gospel music. I showed you that in the Truth Behind Hip Hop Rewind video. He's, he holds all the top spots with cussing, calling women bees, everything in the gospel song. And he's on the charts because the church folks put him there. He is just like the woman in the book of Acts that followed the apostle Paul and declared the truth without giving up her practice of divination and soothsaying. Oh, I preach this. Paul rebuked her because she was still in fellowship with unfruitful works. Kanye is still in fellowship with unfruitful works of darkness and he still promotes them. Right Ephesians 5 and 11 and have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness but rather reprove them. <laughs> Acts 16, 16 and it came to pass as we went to prayer a certain damsel possessed we know Kanye possessed just like this. Certain damsel possessed with a spirit of divination met us, which brought her masters much gain by soothsaying. Kanye bringing them much gain with these albums. The same followed Paul and us and cried saying, these are the servants of the most high God, which show unto us the way of salvation. Most folk would have heard that and said, hey, <laughs> girl, go on. Y'all hear she preaching. She telling the truth. Hey, she telling the truth. She can't tell the truth if she's still making her master's money by soothsaying. Oh, I just see. I, I, you know, that's okay. That's okay. Some folk just want to listen to him. But his beats, pal, his beats be banging. Yeah, she can't. I don't, Paul was annoyed. The Bible said he got annoyed. Said she, this she did many days, but Paul being grieved. Why was he grieved? She was telling the truth. She was telling the truth and preaching the truth. She told him, these are the men that can show us the way. She didn't say you the way. She said us, including herself. So why was Paul grieved? Because she was still working for the soothsayers, making her masters much gain. But Paul, being grieved, turned and said to the spirit, I command thee in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. That's what somebody need to do to Kanye. He won't let nobody like that around him. I command thee in the name of Jesus to come out of her. And he came out the same hour. But then when the masters saw that the hope of their gain was gone, they caught Paul and Silas and drew them into the marketplace unto the rulers and threw them in jail. Because he messed up the money. Can I keep preaching in here? Are y'all enjoying this? That's all they did. It's not make America great, now it's make German great. I mean, it's just, they're just messing with the idea of conservatism. Being conservative versus liberal. That's what all this is. The Illuminati is using him, Kanye, to make conservatives look as evil as Hitler. Basically, those that believe in the Bible are like Nazis which will eventually result in the removal of the Bible from all facilities, including most churches. 
The church embraced this guy and ran out to his concerts, supporting him as he merged the sacred with the profane. And now he has the power he needs to discredit the name of Jesus to the point where people will associate Jesus as king with Hitler was a good guy. This is all a part of the devil's plan to promote liberalism and shun conservatives in our society. Mark 8 and 15. And he charged them saying, take heed, beware of the living of the Pharisees and of the leaven of what? Herod. Politics. The political agendas. Be aware. Can I keep going? Howard John Wesley. He's an immorality activist. Here he is preaching about Sodom and Gomorrah. And you know... You got to watch men that defend homosexuality. You really do. Now, all sins are sins. And all sins will lead to death. But when you go to... <laughs> Bro, I'm watching you. Amen. Why, why that one? Amen. You don't see nobody else out preaching, uh, defending adultery. Murder. Y'all, murder is good. Do it when you can. <laughs> you don't see nobody. You don't see a little clip about that. Why the clip about homosexuality? Now you finna mess with Sodom and Gomorrah. Brother, I will get the youngest person in here and say Sodom and Gomorrah in here, why did it burn up? And they'll say, immorality. There was an abomination in the land. Somebody was doing something abominable. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. But this is what he says. It's about violence and rape. A mob of men want to rape innocent men. This is not same gender love. This is violence and when we talk about same gender love if you equate same gender love to violent acts you have disrespected the conversation him loving him is not the same as a mob of men trying to rape somebody This is the dumbest thing I've ever seen. That's an activist for immorality. The LGBTQ is using this pastor to change the biblical views of sin, immorality, and abominable behavior. This man is preaching some of the greatest heretical message I, messages I've ever heard. And yet many are embracing his lies. That video had 500,000 likes. He is an advocate for same-sex relationships, which means he is working for the agenda of the elite and antichrist. Amen? Jude 7, even as Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities about them in like manner, giving themselves over to what? fornication and going after what? Yeah, this ain't no same gender and violence. No, they was going after strange flesh. The angels went in the room, closed the door. They banging on the door. Bring them out because they look good to us. Lot wax self. Take my daughters. They said, no, we don't want no parts of the daughters. Fornication and going after strange flesh. It don't say nothing about no rape in this passage. It don't say nothing about no violence in this passage. It says they were going after same uh, strange flesh and set forth an example, suffering the vengeance of what? 
Not just the city burning up. Eternal fire. That means that they still burn it. Brother, don't you lead people to hell like this. My goodness. Oh, he said something else. You miss that this is about violence. You miss the sexual violence against women. And you may have missed what God actually says. I know you've interpreted Genesis 19 and you've come to a theological understanding but whatever position you take on whatever issue you look at, can you do me a favor? Can you not base that on one scripture? Because it goes down in Genesis 19, but in Ezekiel 16, God addresses it. Listen to what the Lord says. He says, let me tell you why I destroyed Sodom. Let me tell you the sins of Sodom. He says this, listen, here's the sin of Sodom. They were full of pride. They had a fullness of food. There was an abundance of idleness. And they didn't do anything to help the poor and the needy. That's why I got rid of them. Let's go see. Let's go see. Ezekiel 16 and 49. He got some of it right, of course. They always mix the truth with a lie. Behold, this was the iniquity of thy sister Sodom. What's the first one? What do they call the parades? What do they write on the flags? What is the month of June? Pride, fullness of bread, abundance of idleness was in her and in her daughters. Neither did she strengthen the hand of the poor and needy. Okay, but you didn't finish. 1650, and they were prideful, which is haughty, and committed what? <laughs> they committed abomination before me. Therefore, I took them away. The Bible, look at somebody say, the Bible will preach. If you read it all. You got to keep reading, brother. You can't read to satisfy your urges and your unctions and your same love, gender, whatever. You got to read on, brother. Pride is a sin of the LGBT. They celebrate their pride. They promote their pride. Every major corporation, entertainment, and media entity promotes what? Pride. The sin of homosexuality is the sin of pride. Because you believe you can take your body and do it in what you deem is natural versus what God said is natural. That's the highest level of pride. The highest level of pride in the Bible, Isaiah 14. The devil said, I will be like something I wasn't created to be. I will be like the most high. That's pride. Dallas Southern pride, you know, the, they got the Negro colors in the pride flag now. Now, I done seen a mini thunderstorm. And I, <laughs> I seen a whole bunch of rain. And I ain't never seen no brown in the rainbow. <laughs> brown in the rainbow, bro. I ain't never seen no, no brown. But this is Leandria Johnson and Kelly Price and Yolanda Adams 
doing a gospel. Now, what is the good news of Jesus Christ? Isn't that the gospel? Yeah. They're doing a gospel brunch at a pride gathering. Okay. A pride gathering. Gospel brunch. Romans says it like this. Though they know God's righteous decree that those who practice such things deserve to die. The pride, the homosexuality. But they not only do them, but give approval to those who practice them. That's what you're doing when you perform at the Southern Pride. You're given approval. Back to him. For any preacher to be more concerned about views, likes, popularity, and fame more than the actual torment that people endure from their sinful practices is apostasy. You have to be fully reprobate to not want to help people out of their sinful state. If you're a preacher, this ain't just homosexuality, this is every sinful state. We should want to help people out of their sinful state. How do you condone their sinful state? And you don't have a good memory either because you should remember the pain and suffering that you endured in your sin. Jesus comes to save us from sin, to help us live better and more healthy lifestyles. Sin will kill you. That's why we're preaching against it. Not just homosexual, LGBT, all sin will kill you. Bitterness will kill you. Unforgiveness will kill you. Adultery will kill you. A preacher that doesn't want to save people from sin is not a preacher called of God, but merely a speaker that wants a large audience. But where can he lead you if he is not leading you away from the shame, pain, and torment of sin? Why would anyone follow a man that doesn't care whether you live in sin or not? Why would you follow any preacher It doesn't care whether you live in sin or not. Knowing the wages of sin. Psalms 12 and 8. The wicked walk on every side when the vilest men give them license and are exalted. Nature itself tells you that going against it will harm your body. Psychiatry tells you that if you continue to practice any kind of sin, it will begin to affect your emotion, affect you emotionally and mentally. Can I keep preaching? But most importantly, the Bible tells us that the wages of sin is death. That means any sin that is practiced as a lifestyle will end in death. Emotional death, mental death, physical death, and spiritual death. There is a consequence to sin. This man was raised up by the elite and given an antichrist platform to make you comfortable in your sin so you will miss Jesus altogether. What an evil person. Real love tells the truth. Ezekiel 3 and 18. When I say unto the wicked, thou shalt surely die, and thou givest him no warning. So God is saying, when I say to the wicked, they shall surely die, but you're giving them no warning, nor speaking to warn the wicked from his wicked way to save his life, the same wicked man shall die in his sins, but his blood will I require at your hand. Mm -hmm. summary (laughs) the 
Bible warns that in the last days, many will fall away from the faith. It also warns of seducers that would pervert the gospel for the agenda of the age. We are seeing this fulfilled today. Many preachers and so-called believers are promoting the end time agenda of Aleister Crowley. Do what thou wilt. And so many Christians are falling for it. Social media has leveled the playing field so that everyone is a prophet and people do not have to trust the spiritual authority anymore. They can click off when they are not pleased and they can swipe left when they want to hear something that will agree with them. People are no longer in position to be disciplined or discipled by God's true leaders. They vilify the true teachers and exonerate the grievous wolves that masquerade as preachers. This generation is in trouble. We must pray and stay diligent in this hour so that we will not be deceived by these false teachers. We must also pray and allow the Holy Spirit to lead us to good sources of truth that are dependable and faithful to God's word alone. Amen. Those that are corrupted by money, power, and fame must be avoided. Even when they sound sincere and legit, their fruit will always tell on them. So stay strong, stay faithful, and stay unmovable. Jesus is coming soon, and you do not want to miss him because you are following the wrong voice. Jude 3, beloved, when I gave all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation, it was needful for me to write unto you and exhort you that you should earnestly do what? Amen. Contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. For there are certain men crept in unawares who were before of old ordained to this condemnation. Ungodly men turning the grace of of our Lord God into lasciviousness and denying the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible predicted it and it's here. Everyone stand to your feet. Hallelujah. Contend for the faith means to fight for the faith. A contender is a fighter. Right? So we're going to contend for the faith. You need strength in this hour to continue to fight this fight. If you've heard things and seen things and it's messing with your faith, I'm going to pray for you today that whatever spirit was sent to you, and that's what God has showed me, sometimes people send spirits to you. They send spirits to you because they, in where they are, they hate. They hate their lives. They hate the decisions they made. They hate where they are. They will send evil spirits to you out of jealousy and envy. And those spirits will come and you'll begin to hear things that weren't said, see things that didn't happen. And that could lead you down a path where you can't contend for the faith. I want to pray for you. If that's you, just come on up. If you feel that you need strength in contending for the faith in this hour, you feel somebody may be doing some voodoo, somebody's trying to keep you from getting truth, or you just want to be able to stand in this hour, you want to be able to hear this stuff and see what God says about it. We're going to stay planted in the faith. Man, I can't believe these folks said this stuff. I can't believe they did it. I can't believe they uploaded it to the internet and people are believing it. I can't believe they can twist scripture like this. For homosexuality, one of the things that just destroys the human body more than any other sin. It destroys men's bodies, shortens their lifespan. I can't believe it. You don't want to help them. 
You wouldn't rather preach the truth to help them? And they'll be the first to tell you the only reason I'm like this is because somebody did this to me. Somebody defiled them. Somebody hurt them. Somebody raped. Somebody did something to them. And they'll be the first to tell you it's torment. Why would you advocate? God wants to save us from our sin. He wants us all out of sin. Father God, we just thank you for this word, Lord. And Father God, we just thank you, Lord. We don't take the position of feeling that we're better than anybody. We don't take the position of condemning others for the type of sins that they're into. We've all been into sin, Lord. And you, your grace and mercy got us out. Your grace and mercy is what rescues us. Your grace and mercy is there. We have an advocate with the Father who is faithful and just to forgive us our sins. That advocate is Jesus Christ. You are our intercessor to help us when we need it. So we're not looking above anybody that's involved in any sins or sinful lifestyle. But Father God, we know that you are the answer. We know you are the answer. So we're not going to lie about it. We're not going to twist scripture and proof text just to feel better about what we're doing. Father God, we're going to accept your truth and change. But help us, Lord, in this hour so we can see right from wrong. So we can see, Father God, when it is against you. We can see, Father God, when it is not of you. We can see when these men are grievous wolves. When they are selfish in their desires to just have gain at the expense of your people. And Father, I pray right now for everyone that came up. Lord, whatever is working behind the scenes to try to persuade them to get off course, to get off the path you set for them. Father God, I pray right now that that be broken. Right now, all witchcraft, any spell, any curse, any enchantment. Father God, break it right now. In the name of Jesus, anyone that is speaking their name and speaking things their way and trying to persuade them away from you. Father God, I break it right now by the power of the Holy Ghost just because they came up. Come on, lift your hands. Just because they came up, boldly came up. Father God, protect your people. Give them their right mind. Give them a sober mind. Give them strength to stand. Father God, Stand against the evil of our world. As we go into this new year, more evil will surface. But Father God, just like you kept us through the pandemic and kept us through COVID and kept us through lockdowns and kept us through all of that, you're going to keep us through 2023. We believe it in the name of Jesus. We have no fear. We're not afraid. As long as you are with us, you have not given us the spirit of fear power love and a sound mind so we are not afraid so I pray right now that you would strengthen every one of these believers as they go their way in Jesus name we pray amen amen hallelujah hallelujah look at somebody and say I'm stronger now come on give them a hug on your way back to your seat this was the message I needed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, every now and then I got to put folk on the screen when they just go crazy like this. I try to only reserve it for the truth behind hip hops and that kind of stuff. But man, these folk crazy. These folks have gone crazy. But we not crazy. Amen. We're not ignorant of the devil's devices. Don't leave, don't leave now. Don't leave. Go to your seats. Hallelujah.